open your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. Anybody that's been following what's happening in Israel since October 7th has heard the phrase, from the river to the sea. I'll give just you a sh very short kind of definition that explains what that phrase means. It's a slogan often heard in pro-Palestinian demonstrations. It symbolizes Palestinian national aspirations covering the geographical span from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, an area encompassing Israel and the Palestinian territories. Historically associated with calls for a Palestinian state in lieu of Israel in the Palestinian territories, it may imply the replacement of Israel, as initially outlined in a Palestinian Liberation Organization charter. The stance has evolved from the Oslo, following the Oslo Accords in the 1990s. Groups such as Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad have used the slogan to endorse Israel's destruction. <clears throat> Since 1988, it's been part of Hamas' charter to destroy and eliminate Israel. They have no designs for peace. They talk about they want a two-state solution, but they really don't want that. They want control of all of Israel. They want to eliminate Israel. That's that part of their charter. It amazes me that, at least nothing that I can tell, and all the research that I've done, that no one's asked any of these terrorist groups to revise their charter as a good faith sign to move forward if they're that interested in peace. But how can you even talk about peace when you won't even remove it from your charter that you want to see the destruction of Israel? and a death to all Jews. <clears throat> now, the question, can all Jews and Israelites in the, in the nation of Israel be destroyed? Now, we know the end from the beginning, and I'm going to tell you right now, the Jews the Israelites, the nation of Israel, will not be destroyed. They will not be eliminated. But for all you Jew haters out there, whether you're Arab or anyone else, trying to use force to ensure that Israel has no future, I got news for you. You're just going about it the wrong way. If you want to see Israel eliminated, God has laid out in his word how that can happen. You mean God in his word has some type of formula that he has laid out that would destroy Israel? once and forever, the Jews, all Israelites, not just Jews, from existence forever? Yeah, you got to follow his formula. You got to follow what he has laid out in his word. And I know this sounds crazy to a lot of people. I'm used to that. But I usually could back up what I say. Not just with opinion, but with God's word. So don't tune me out. 
So let's pursue this. God does have a unfailing formula for destruction of all Jews, Israelites, Israel. He really does. Well, I never heard that. I've been waiting for you to teach on something where I finally could say, I had enough, I want to bail, on, bail out on you. Because I just can't agree with it. Well, you just can't agree with God's word then. This is not my opinion. I'm going to preach it right from God's word. Hopefully I've gotten your attention now. If you want to see Israel ceasing from being a nation, then God has laid out exactly what needs to take place for that to happen. Every anti-Semitic Arab or whoever, every hating Muslim who is determined to bring destruction of Israel to pass should listen closely. I got the plan for you. No, I don't. God does. And they're all coming from the scriptures. This is the secret of Israel's demise. If you can carry it out. And that's a big if. And there's a lot of Christian leadership out there who denies the nation of Israel having a future in that land. So I'm not just talking about Arabs. I'm not just talking about anti-Semitic people. You find it in the Christian circles also. They have a wonderful future under their Messiah eventually. according to all the prophecies that I could locate. So what are you talking about? Turn to Jeremiah 31. Let's go to verse 35. Verse 35 reads, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If, the big what if again, those ordinance depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel, and that's just not Jews, the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Before me forever. If those ordinance depart from before me. Now we all know that God has appointed the sun to shine by day to give us light. And he's also appointed the moon and stars to shine by night. That's in the scriptures. Verse 35, 36 in chapter 31 of Jeremiah. Now God's word here also says that if these ordinances depart from before him, then will the seed, the descendants of Israel, 
the descendants of Jacob cease from being a nation before him. Forever. Now, the nation of Israel, all Israelites, all Jews can take great comfort from this promise. If I was one of those people, I'd be jumping for joy. Because there's great comfort in this promise here in the scriptures. Because every day when the sun is out there shining, and every night when the, you see the moon and the stars, and even every visit to an ocean, when you see waves in action, You can know that your preservation as a people is secured because we go. <clears throat> Let's read it again. Thus say the Lord, which give the sun for a light by day and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. You have three elements there. The sun, the moon, the waves. Just look at the water that's in the oceans. The closest guesstimate scientists have come up with concerning how much water is in the oceans comes out to 352 quintillion gallons of water. How much is that? That's right on the board. To be one, two, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Uh, I'm running out of room, but add another three zeros. Three hundred and fifty two quintillion gallons of water. That's ten raised to the power of eighteen. Three hundred and fifty two quintillion gallons of water. If you really think about it, the enemies of Israel need to change their strategy because it's not working. They're not following the plan that God has laid out of how to bring forever the destruction of the people of Israel, Israelites, Jews, and the nation. They need to change their strategies. They need to read God's word. Instead of aiming their weapons, weapons to destroy Jews, to destroy Jerusalem, to destroy Israel, if you really think about it, they need to aim their missiles where the scriptures say they should be aiming it at. And what is that? The sun the moon, the stars. Now this sounds ridiculous. And God's making it sound ridiculous to drive home the point. Israel, Jews and all Israelites, are not going anywhere. But God did give you a way to strategize and He would keep His word if you're able to eliminate the sun, the moon, and the stars. Let's make it simple. They could start with the moon. They could try to knock it off its orbit. It's 
and spending all their time in evil laboratories trying to figure out how to deliver chemical weapons. They're just not focusing on the right thing. How about devising a plan to somehow neutralize the waves of the ocean? Why not? Well, you're being ridiculous. Not me, God. So don't insult God. He laid this out. As long as those waves are roaring, as long as the stars are shining, as long as the sun is out there in the universe, Israel's future is secure. But that's not it. There's more. Let's read it. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth search out beneath, I will also, here we go again, I will also cast off, another way of translating the Hebrews, I will melt away all the seed of Israel, all of it, for all that have for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Let's take the first part. Thus say the Lord, if heaven above can be measured. If he heavens can be measured, God will cast off the seed of Israel forever. Well, how are you going to measure the universe? It's forever expanding. At least that's what we're told. At least, at least that's what we could measure now. We can't see the, anything of, beyond what does not produce some light as far as measurement goes. The galaxies are not moving through space. That's where people get it wrong. They're not, galaxies are not moving through space. They are moving in space, away from everything else. You ever make, made homemade bread? You have the dough, you put the yeast, and you see it start rising? Well, make believe you're making raisin bread. You start off, before it starts rising, you put all these raisins in the bread. And then as it expands, what's happening? Those raisins are, raisins are expanding away from each other. That is what, in, our, in a very simple explanation, what our galaxy is doing. It's not moving through space. We're moving in space. Moving away from everything else. We don't know how vast this space is and the reason why and science at least do admit this because we can't see its end we don't even know if it has an end we're guessing that it's all start with the big bang and from that point everything expanded but there's no 100 percent guarantee of that that is just a theory god willing someday we'll have those answers but until then, thus say the word of the Lord, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of earth searched out beneath. You really think about it. If Israel's enemies get upset 
and frustrated because they can't figure a way to vaporize heavenly bodies and fail at trying to neutralize the waves of the oceans, of the ocean, then God has another strategy they can follow, which also is a guarantee for the destruction of Israel and its people. God's word says all they need to do is measure the heaven above. The whole vastness of heaven. God knows how many heavens we can't even see. This is all beyond our comprehension. We have feeble minds. Yes, scientists have equipped, them, equipped themselves with like Hubble telescopes. And they even admit now that there's 10 times more stars in the universe than every single grain of sand that we could find in the beaches of this world. Mind-blowing. The further they look out into the universe of space, guess what they're finding? More stars than they even knew about every time they look out there with their high-definition equipment. What am I trying to say? The universe cannot be measured by man. Nor can the stars be counted. I repeat, all the enemies of Israel should rethink their approach. Instead of constantly attacking Israel, put your minds together and try to develop a bigger and better telescope. Because if you can measure it, only then will God cast off the seed, the descendants of Jacob, Israel. Once again, what am I pointing out? Israel's future is secure until they are successful in following what God's word says that needs to happen for the elimination of Israel. Now, if looking up and measuring the heavens seems too great of a task, scriptures here says in verse 17 that you could look down and try to seek out the earth beneath you. Man has tried that, searching the earth, mostly because of oil and so forth. They dig and they drill, and they even admit they barely scratch the surface. But if man could dig to the center of the earth, here's hope for you, Israel haters. God will cast out the seed the descendants of Israel. So, by my count here, the enemy of Israel has six fail-proof ways to eliminate Israel. Obliterate the sun, one. The moon, two. Three, the stars. And if that fails, you got to neutralize the roaring seas or the waves. That would be one, two, three, four. Uh, if that doesn't work, you still have one remaining. Well, you count the stars. Let me not forget that. And count the stars. That'd be five. And you have one remaining solution if you are to destroy Israel. You better get some shovels and start digging. Six ways, according to God's word, that we find that would eliminate Israel once and for all. Six ways. It'd be a lot simpler 
and better to take God and His Word and understand the promises that are given to Israel concerning their future. Instead of fighting against them, have a change of mind and a change of heart of who you worship and serve. Israel has a glorious future in the kingdom of Messiah. We see it. Go to Jeremiah 23. Verse 5. It reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Verse 6. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more save the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I have driven them, and they shall not dwell in their own land. Dwell in their own land. Go to Jeremiah 30. And I'll finish here. Jeremiah 30, verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. That's a promise. And the only way that promise could be broken is if you follow those six points I've made coming from the scriptures where God has to break his promise. Now, God knew very well you couldn't even come close to fulfilling these six points. So what is the alternative? God keeps his word. I will not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished, which he didn't. And this scripture has a dual fulfillment, but I'm not going to get into that. So there you have it. Those of you who want to see Israel eliminated, I just gave to you a plan that you can carry out to see if you can eliminate Israel and all its people once and for all. Or as God's word says, eliminate them forever. You never have to have the problem with Israel again. You're just going about the wrong way. You're wasting your time with weapons of warfare. You're wasting your time with all the propaganda to try to cause Israel to be hated. God's word makes it very clear what you need to do. My only comment on that is good luck with that. Good luck with that. Israel is not going anywhere any longer. That time has come and went. Listen to the last day series to become informed why that is a true statement. Israel is planted. It will not be moved again. Oh, tough times are coming. They'll be involved in wars. They're involved in wars right now. <clears throat> Whether this is a Psalm 83 war period we're in or not still remains to be seen. But each day that goes by, it looks like it could potentially move into the second phase if it is. But nevertheless, Israel is secure in God's eyes. 
Oh, there'll be moments ahead, especially in the Gog Magog War. Well, they'll, well, they'll, well, they will think that God maybe has abandoned them. But the king that they rejected the first time will come to deliver them and come to rule and reign. So all you Jew haters and Israel descendant haters, I got good news and bad news for you. The good news, God's words lays out a plan for you to eliminate Israel. The bad news is you'll never accomplish it. And Israel is secure. Now, I want to hear from you. Play the song. <laughs> 